So uh, let's kick it over to running back. So, you know, this is not the same fantasy football as it was, you know, five, six, seven, ten years ago when basically the whole first round was running backs and, you know, quarterbacks even, right? And then there was a, a random wide receiver thrown in here and there. But uh, running backs have really soured um, in the mouths of a lot of fantasy football players because, like we were mentioning at the top of the show, um, between injuries, holdouts, disappointments. I mean, there's just, you know, not a whole lot of optimism for many of these guys. And it's kind of like, you know, we'll, we'll go down the board a little bit later, but it's like after you pass like running back six, you start having questions. And that's not really where you want to be when drafting, you know, a second third round player you want to be very confident in your pick and very sure that that person's going to be an every week starter that's going to lead you to a championship so um yeah what's your general you know first and second round strategy with running backs are you are you kind of a complete fade this year or or, or what are you what are you doing so i think you said it best and i like fancy pros rankings here because that top six does feel like a cliff there um, I think like I want one of those top six guys and that's my like one RB strategy, grab one of those guys and then shift over to wide receivers for like three, four rounds and then jump back into the running back pool and see who's fallen or, and whatnot. Just cause like all, all six of those guys have potential to be the number one RB for the season and just blow it up. Like after that, like you said, there's so many question marks, so much stuff going on. We can talk about it, but yeah. How about you? Yeah, man, I, I think I'm right there with you is the top six, you know, you sure you can have questions about each one, I guess, but the top six give you the RB1 overall potential, um, you know, I guess a healthy, happy Jonathan Taylor also gives you that, um, but sure. there's question marks there too. Um, Josh Jacobs flirted with it last year, but he's holding out right now. Just gets ugly quick. So that's exactly why I'm with you. That um, you know, I I want to figure out a way to get one of these top six on my team, and um, you know, if if you're drafting towards the back of the first round, um, you're almost certainly going to have an opportunity to get um, Bijan Robinson, Nick Chubb, Barkley, or Pollard. So, um, kind of depending where you are, if you're one of the top three picks in the draft. I don't think you're going to get any of the top six. They're probably usually all gone by the second round, right? Yeah. Um, I've seen Pollard going in the second and just scoop him up anytime you can in the second. Any Anything in the second round, Tony Pollard, done. Like, I think it's great. Uh, one of the strategies we actually haven't talked about, though, is uh, tiers. So, like, drafting by tiers is, like, a cool thing. And I feel like they have it here where it's, like, kind of two tiers. I almost have, like, the one through six in, like, the one tier. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's where, like, I want the end of that tier, right? Like, when you're drafting – if you're looking at tiers, you want to get the end of that tier because then you're getting the most value maybe out of your pick. So if like sure. some of the end of the tier falls to you, you're grabbing them, you're getting extra value there. And then maybe you can jump into another position or back into a different tier. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm with you there. And um, let's just talk real quick about like a couple of these running backs. The reason why we're kind of calling them the big six, and it's cool that yeah. we both agree on that so much. A lot of these guys – you know, they had a great off season, right? You know, let's just go down the list. Christian McCaffrey, um, you know, one step closer to being fully healthy. Um, and then also no competition added to the backfield. So and, that's good. Kyle Shanahan offense. Like he's just going to get the ball. A yeah, lot. He's going to, He's going to eat as long situations. as he's <laughs> as long as he's on the field. He's going yeah. to eat. Um, you know, I think uh, I think Brock Purdy starting is a good thing for Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Um, it, you know, Trey Lance would take away some of those rushing yards, perhaps. Exactly. So I, I think McCaffrey is set up to just absolutely dominate. Um, same with Eckler. No, no competition added in the backfield there. It's just all him. Um, B. John Robinson, we can say he had a great offseason because he was drafted in the freaking <laughs> top 10 um, yeah. to the team that has Arthur Smith as the head coach. That's absolutely just going to run the ball They're every chance ball. he has. Yeah. Now, if Arthur Smith me, can run the ball. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, the only thing that scares me about him is Arthur Smith decides he wants to be like a three headed monster or something. And it's uh, Algier and Cordell Patterson. But with Bijan, you're betting on like just this insane talent that he's going to be the best player since Barkley, you know, like he's, he's going to be insane. And 
talent will just show. Dude, did you see their first their first edition of their um their depth chart? No. <laughs> Bijan's listed number three. Yeah, see the the depth chart see, thing preseason, they don't even count. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they, they always try to appease the yeah. veterans, right? It's like Corel Patterson's yeah. listed as a starter and okay. then Algier and then Bijan. It's like get the hell out of here. Or it's like rookies paying their dues or something, right? It's something like exactly. that, you know, and then come game game day. Oh yeah, we're gonna pay the guy we took number eight overall. Like I think so. For sure. Yeah. Um so anyway, yeah, um Chubb. Yeah, so so Chubb had a great off season because Kareem Hunt left and no one got added. So, um, you know, we've been kind of clamoring to see Nick Chubb catch the ball a little bit more. And um, maybe this is our chance. I mean, their backup running back is Jerome Ford. Um, not many, not a household name, right? So and he, he's banged uh, up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think Nick Chubb, I mean, all things considered, don't you find him to like want to be one of the safest players in fantasy football he has a great bill of health all the time he's an offense that loves to run the ball they have a good offensive line he's like one of the most efficient runners ever he scores a lot of touchdowns it's like can nick chubb fail he's built like a tank dude just keeps keeps on trucking keeps going but yeah then we got barkley up next and barkley is on you know anyone the brian dable offense I'm, i'm in you know i'm in on some of that stuff and barkley is just gonna get better and better with him yeah, for sure. I mean, Barkley had a great, great year too. I mean, he he got his money that he was wanting, and little to no competition added. I mean, they drafted a guy in like the sixth round, Evan Hall, who's not really going to take any of Barkley's workload. Barkley's going to be a seventy five percent, you know, share of that backfield or more. Um, yeah, and then Pollard. It's like so we saw Zeke today sign with New England. And um, what was the other signing today? Oh, uh, Dalvin Cook to the Dalvin. Jets. So Tony Pollard's home free, man. I mean, I think I might be all oh, yeah. in. No, I, I think I am. That's what I was saying. Like, anytime he slips in the second, just grab him everywhere you can. I think even like back into the first is probably where he's going right now, as far as I see. And yeah. I, I'm happy with him there, too. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think a pretty sick start to a draft is um, C.D. Lamb and Tony Pollard. Yeah like that but anyway okay so we all agree there's a there's a there's a big six and for very good reason um now let's start talking about um so we'll say between seven and 12 it's a nice group because it's all people that we have really decent questions on right um so who do you like out of this next you know i I think my next tier is like the seven to twelve um, so who, who, who are you targeting in there? Uh, real quick shout out to the, that Dolphins realtor. What's up? He's just saying hi. Um, in that, in that range, you know, it's a little, I, I, I kind of feel like I want to take a chance that Jonathan Taylor works everything out. He's mm-hmm. such a star and I, I feel like they can't mess it up that bad. Right. Or he gets, maybe he gets traded and then wherever he goes, he's instantly going to be amazing. Um, so, I don't know. What I was do you actually think of, think, who, who do you have going for? <laughs> see, he, here's the thing with fantasy football. I think you play to win. You don't play not to lose, right? So I think I'm actually somewhat excited that Taylor and Jacobs and Mixon just continue to slide because um, you know, who knows what their situation will be in a couple weeks when you start doing more drafts. But I almost wish I was drafting now because if these guys all had contracts and were in training camp and we're happy right now, they're, they're all, you know, elevated to late first round, early second round picks, which they're not going at at all right now. So um, yeah, I'm with you. I'm kind of embracing the, the volatility a little bit here with uh, Taylor and Jacobs and, you know, looking to soak that up. Yeah, I think so too. I think Ramondre is interesting too. If he starts to slide, I, I know they picked up Zeke, but Zeke is kind of like a little washed, right? He like doesn't look like the same Zeke anymore. And Ramondre is still going to get the pass catching stuff. The only problem you have is Zeke could just steal all of the goal line. Zeke could just fall in the goal line five times, and that would kind of suffer Ramondre. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I think 
So I'm a big Real Madre fan, and I was actually excited to see them get Zeke. I wanted them to get like Zeke or Kareem Hunt or someone, mm-hmm. something that has somebody has name value that's going to push Real Madre down draft boards. But I don't actually think that Real Madre Stevenson is going to be hurting with Zeke. I mean, what's yeah. what's what's Zeke's every week line going to look like? It's going to be six or seven carries for 20 yards and maybe a touchdown. Right? That's kind of what yeah. we're looking at. And, and Belichick is like not super trusting with running backs. If Zeke makes one mistake, Belichick's going to pinch him. Like it's just what he does. Uh, I, I agree with, with with Jake over here. JT is going to play football this year. He's he has to absolutely has to. I'm yeah. Let's let's way. show this. Hey Jake, thanks for the super chat, man. Um, you'll meet Jake later on. He's one of the uh, content producers on this channel. Um, nice. Yeah, uh, biggest Bills fan I've ever met in my life. Um, and Jake's the <laughs> man. He'll, he'll join us for our mock. Mark our mock draft next week, I'm sure. Cool. But um I think we'll say together, yes, Jonathan Taylor will be playing football. And I'm not convinced that I think a trade is better for his fantasy value than staying there. Yeah. I mean it could depend where he is, but think about it. Typically you don't want a running back that has a super mobile quarterback, and that's what he has right now. And I don't know. Like, there's some dream spots that Taylor could land in: um, Miami, Kansas City. Yeah. So, everybody wants to go to Kansas City, right? Everybody wants everybody to go to Kansas City. And just hope they turn into <laughs> something crazy. Exactly. There. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I feel like if you're going a little further down that list, there over at 15, Jameer Gibbs. I've been taking a bunch of Gibbs, probably too much Gibbs. I just think his <laughs> price point. We've seen rookies from that spot. He's like third round ish, third or fourth round right now. I bet some home leagues he might even fall to like fourth, fifth. And we've just seen too many rookies crush it from that area. And he was drafted so high. So I got to ask are you not scared of the man, the myth, the legend, David Montgomery? <laughs> no, I, I like him too. So in drafts where I'm not taking Jameer Gibbs, I'm taking David Montgomery because I think they can both get fed there. I. I think for sure there's like there's a role for both of them, but I think of the two, Gibbs has the chance to just skyrocket there. Yeah. So, um, Dolphins realtor, I'm surprised James James Cook isn't higher. I'm targeting. I yeah. think Jeremy and I will agree on that. We'll get to him in a second, but we'll we'll have a little talk about um, uh, James Cook. Um, I'm I'm with you on Gibbs. I mean, I think the the talent is undeniable. Um, paying RB15 price to someone, I, it's going to be tough for me. I mean, I wish he was in that 2021 20, range just because yeah. I do think David Montgomery's good. I think he was, you know, dare I say, underutilized in Chicago. He's on a much better offense with a much better offensive line right now in Detroit. Um, I just, I think David Montgomery's going to smash. So I don't, I just don't know how much there is to go around uh, with Montgomery and Gibbs. And um, yeah, let's not forget about our man, Aaron Jones, who's been an RB one for four straight years. Yeah. I could see them like leaning heavily on him. Uh, Jordan love, you know, dumping the ball off to him a bunch and he's a pass catcher. And that's, that's what you want in a running back. You want the pass catching ability, get those extra points. I could definitely see him kind of tearing it up. Um, he, he's a little older, I guess. That's the only downside to him, right? And that also, mm-hmm. we just don't know about the Packers' offense. We don't know what they're going to be. Last year, Aaron Rodgers just kind of gave up on football, I guess. <laughs> so this year, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jones is, you know, I think he's 28 this year. But he was kind of a late starter, right? I mean, his first, like, two years, he wasn't really used. I don't think he has a ton of tread on the tires for a 28-year-old, so – kind of still in on him um speaking of pass catching backs and that's who you want do you think the jaguars forgot that travis Etienne is an elite pass catcher or like what's going on in, over there you know i liked him a lot and then this like tank bigsby talk coming out about him being the pass catching guy just like has me fading Etienne a little bit which i hate i like him a lot uh but i have just been kind of letting other people scoop him up early and i just kind of pass on him uh, I could be totally wrong, and he could end up crushing it. But I'm just—I'm afraid they're going to end up giving some to the rookie too, and see how things go. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm with you. They drafted Tank's big Tank Bigsby in the third or fourth round this year. 
Um, but I would like to correct a common misconception about Tank Bigsby. I think people take his first name a little too literally. Um, not necessarily the biggest guy. Um, ETN's actually <laughs> bigger BMI than than Tank Bigsby. So um, I don't know that Bigsby's going to come in and just immediately steal the goal line back yeah. role as a rookie. I think everyone's way overplaying that. I think it's Travis ETN's backfield for as much as he can – eat and um yeah i'm, I'm kind of liking this year we just need him to get that pass catching roll back yeah jake's talking about miles sanders I'm not a big miles sanders fan this year with carolina i just i think i'm out on everything carolina this year i, I know he can be fancy relevant there like for sure it's just it's i mean chuba's already been there um for a little while and they could give him some work I, i'm just I'm, I'm a little bit out of out on him this year i could be totally wrong but just so, I have not been taking any of them. Was it just me? And I'm, I'm I don't have the stats in front of me, but it felt like last year there was like a six to eight week period where you just wanted the Carolina running back. It was kind of a, <laughs> a, a, a you know a shuffle which of one? the running backs. Yeah, it was like exactly. Which one did you want? Yeah, but I don't know. It's like they were so dedicated to running the ball and running it well. Um, yeah, I feel like Miles Sanders is like the biggest trap ever this year, but yeah. I think I'm gonna take the take the bait. Um, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I think I think that with a rookie QB, you need to lean on your on your running back a little bit. And uh he's still young. I think he's entering his prime. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna be in on some Miles Sanders just because I like him better than the guys right around him. Um Totally out on Alexander Madison this year. I'm not going to own one share. I'm just yeah, I'm completely off that. I just think he's – I'm not going to say he lucked into it. I just think he's not good at football. Like he's just – he's not fast. He's not explosive. He's not a good pass catcher. I don't know, man. I know the he's offense the is really good. No, he's not. He's just not the guy. That's it. Yeah. It's all good. But a yeah. little above them, we haven't talked about Brees Hall yet. And I think this uh, Dalvin Cook thing is just – it's nothing. They, they want a little extra insurance because they're not sure if he's going to be 100% week one. But Brees Hall is – he is the guy. Like, he's going to blow up. And I'll take any kind of fade people are doing on him. Yeah, I'm with you, man. On We were talking about Kyler Murray and quarterbacks like yeah. slate breaker type players. Brees Hall is the slate like, slate breaker running back. Right. Um, he got activated from the pup today. Um or whatever list he was on, I don't know, yeah. which was which was interesting because they signed Dalvin Cook on the same day. But um, man, if I, I think Dalvin the Dalvin Cook signing was because of Aaron Rodgers, I think he wanted a, a veteran presence back there, yeah. dude. We all watched that six or seven game period with Brees Hall. He's unreal. If you know, I, I know like coming off the knee injury, first year back, you know you're a little bit worrisome about that. But at running back 16, let's get a grip. He can be RB1 overall if he starts the year fully healthy week one. Yeah, totally agree with you. I think that's in the realm. Cool. Well, um, let's see here. Yeah, Kenneth Walker, super nervous about that because of the Charbonnet draft. You feel the same way? Yeah, I, I like Charbonnet a little better um, for, for where the key's going and – his kind of ability, I guess, um, to maybe take over pass catching there. Um, I feel like we're kind of entering a little bit of the running back dead zone here. People like to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, explain guys, explain a little bit crazy. more of what you explain a little bit more of what you mean by that running back dead zone. So it's like so typically, you know, if, once you get past like kind of the third round, it's like the rounds. What is it like four to six ish? Uh, statistically, a lot of those running backs don't do don't really outperform their ADP. They're not going to do better than where they. You grabbed them, and a lot of times they're going to do worse. So that's kind of why they call it the running back dead zone. Because a lot of times people don't like taking running backs in those rounds four to six. Um, another reason it's called the dead zone is because the wide receivers in those rounds are a lot more valuable than the running backs. Mm -hmm. So I, I so tend what? to go running back or wide receiver and just kind of ignore running backs that round. Yeah, so I think what we're trying to tell you, um, <laughs> two running backs in the first four rounds – and then let it be till like round eight or nine and just smash um, that, you know, that's what we were talking about. We like the QBs in that range in the, in the rounds four to eight range. And um, we really like the wide receivers, which we'll get to next. And um, I think that's where the tight end value is too. So just ignoring this, this group of, you know, the miles Sanders through the 
Alvin Kamara's is probably a really good thing to do. Well, what um, do you think about Kamara? Actually, I'm curious to hear because we just found out it's a three game suspension, and potentially if he appeals it, they're saying it could go down to two. And the, the man is really good. I could not no? be more off. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I no nothing. He dude, uh, he was terrible last year. He was like one of the most inefficient running backs last year. He's saved by the fact that you know he catches three to five balls a game. I don't know, man. He didn't pass the the house sometimes. (laughs) Yeah. He just didn't pass the eye test for me whatsoever last year. I know David Carr coming in is a um, upgrade at QB, but um, I don't know. I I just don't see a situation like, for example, I'm draft. I want Montgomery, Javante Williams and James cook all 10 times more than I want Camara. I'm just going to, I'm just going to have zero Camara. Uh, zero. I, I None. kinda think he still has it in him. I kinda wanna <sighs> take a chance on him and hope he can like just go crazy. Like I I think he's still got him in him. Like you do it. Like, you know, like James you're Conner gonna, last you're year. You're gonna you're gonna sit here and look me in the <laughs> eyes and tell me that you're taking Alvin Kamara over Dave Montgomery. Yeah, right now. A yeah, guy that's so. not playing football for three games. It could be two, who knows? <laughs> oh god. I think so. I need but, a new co host. I, I, <laughs> I I know, I know. Uh, no, but actually, kidding. a guy we passed over there that I like a little better than him is is Rashad White. Actually, I find myself grabbing him where he is a lot. I just think he's a guy that is getting overlooked, maybe and not talked about enough. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think he could do really, really well in Tampa. Tampa doesn't have a lot, you know, the QB situation. Who knows what's going on? But the running back situation doesn't have a lot of competition. It's Rashad White. Yeah, I agree. They have, you know, what Keyshawn Vaughn and um, Chase Edmonds, which is, like you said, no competition. Um, Rashad White might just be the king of garbage time this year. Like, I could see him getting <laughs> yeah. three or four receptions every fourth quarter when Baker Mayfield is just tired of getting sacked and, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I'm with you. He Rashad White has an intriguing upside. The offense is going to be really bad. Let's not forget that. But I just think – he will have a really nice floor um, to with his, you know, receiving ability and no competition. <laughs> and uh, J.K. Dobbins is getting activated off the pub list. How, how are you feeling about that? Jake's asking. <laughs> yeah, let me see. <laughs> oh yeah, that was today, wasn't it? Uh, Man, I'm 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 actually pretty tired of these running backs acting like babies, uh, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Dobbins has a dimension to him. Um, now that he is fully healthy, that the Ravens just didn't have, right? I mean, he was basically who carried us um, at the end of the year last year and in the playoffs. And, you know, he was pissed that we didn't feed him more in the playoffs. I mean, he was basically Everybody running on was, one right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was basically running on one leg, and he was still – just clowning the 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 um, Cincinnati defense. Um, we just underutilized him. I, I'm excited for the first time ever to see fully healthy J.K. Dobbins. Um, Ravens have a good offensive line, and there's tons of other weapons. You can't stock the box against the Ravens anymore. So, um, you know, I'm 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 squeamish on him because he's just a zero in the passing game, and Lamar never throws to running backs. But um, I'm intrigued with the talent. I'm going to have fun watching him this year. I just probably won't watch him score many points for my fantasy team because I probably <laughs> won't draft a lot of him. I just like yeah. a couple people behind him uh, just as much. Yeah. Well, we were going to ask about James Cook. Let's, let's switch over to him. I I think he's. it's hard not to draft someone on such a good offense. He's just going to get so much opportunity, right? That's like the driving force behind James Cook. Yeah, I mean, he was, I don't know, and maybe Jake can chime in with the, with the stats here. I'm sure he, he has them tattooed on his arm or something. <laughs> but um, James Cook, yeah. I think he was uh, top three in yards per carry and number one breakaway run rate. Um, wow. The guy's absolutely electric with the ball in his hands. Talk about passing the eye test. He's faster than anyone on the field anytime he's on the field. It's it's pretty unreal. Um you know, we'll, you know, kind of like Lamar, you know, Josh Allen's not really a, a check down kind of guy. And we know that's a little bit of James Cook's bread and butter. But yeah. the, the the coach said this year, he said James Cook could be a, a bell cow back, a three down back. So um, how much of James Cook do you think you'll have? 
Yeah, I think I'm going to try to grab him on a few a few teams. You know, uh, I I just think he's the opportunity is there. Um, he could every week he can put up a bunch of points. You know, and he's also again he's he's the he's kind of the guy there. I know they got Damian Harrison, but <laughs> Damian Harris like I don't think he's going to have that big of a role in that offense. You know, I, I just don't see it happening. The only thing I could see him doing is stealing goal line carries from James Cook. That's about it. But you want the yeah. pass catching. You want those big plays that James Cook could do. Yeah, Damian Harris, um, I think he fits in that category. Um, better real-life football player than fantasy player. Um, you know, he's he's going to serve a purpose for that team, but it's not going to take many fantasy points away from from James Cook. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm with you there. Um, cool, yeah, I think Buffalo has a good one on their hands. And to be honest, it's like – James Cook is kind of, dare I say, like an end of a tier here almost of like guys I would want as my like RB2 or RB3. And the rest I'm kind of just, you know, a, a, a hope and a prayer. But I think James Cook is like the last one that I'm pretty confident um, that will have a, a good year. I'm going to take a little bit of a homework pick here and say Antonio Gibson. Uh, he's got that pass catching stuff, man. It's like, is that what you're gonna say? I oh, yeah. You to it. oh, yeah, all in. <laughs> he's got all that in. pass catching stuff, man. And I know Brian Robinson looked good, and the man survived gunshots and came back in like a week. <laughs> he was back like two weeks later after getting shot. Like, but I just yeah. Gibson's got the pass catching. I'm hoping, um, you know, they change the offense up a little bit, use him a little bit than they did last year. Uh, so I, I kind of have him. A little higher, like in that kind of last tier, where I'm, I've been grabbing him just because of where he's going. Some people have Brian Robinson ranked higher than Gibson, right? Right there, they're right next to each other. I think that's kind of where it should be. You can you can kind of take a bet on who you like better, and I, I like Gibson better. Yeah, just think, you know, Ron Rivera is the head coach of of the Commanders. Ron Rivera coached Christian McCaffrey for a long time. Antonio Gibson, similar, you know, size and skill set to Christian McCaffrey. Let's make it happen. Riverboat Ron, let's do it. Yeah. Brian Robinson, I see, I, I might have to disagree with you a little bit. I thought he looked pretty trash last year. Yeah. I mean, he was like, he he was just like the king of the three yard run. And for <laughs> fantasy, it's just not doing it for me. So you fall in the end zone every three yards. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm I, at the same ADP. I'm not, never I, taking Brian Robinson over Antonio Gibson. I, I'm having not zero Brian Robinson this year. That, I, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, just because there's two of them in this, you know, I shot here. Where are you on the Philly backfield? I think I'm just avoiding all of them. Um, well, that, that's not true. I, I like Rashad Penny a little bit of the of the guys. I think he's. I like where he's going. I guess I like his value. I like getting him a bit later. Um, I think that's what's having me like maybe grab him here and there just because he's going later. Like I, I don't yeah. like where Swift is going. I'd rather have some other guys. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of the, the, the rule of thumb on crowded backfields where it's, you know, undecided, no one really knows who's going to be, you know, quote unquote, the lead back or, or who's going to get the goal line work or who's going to be the receiving back whenever that's the case. And it's like a, a three headed backfield always go with the cheapest option yeah. Um, in, in my opinion. So I think oh, yeah. you just naturally want to fade, you know, the more expensive guy who this year is swift, um, you know, love his talent um, when he can stay on the field. He's, he's a really fun player to watch, but uh, yeah, I, I think with, with Rashad Penny and Kenny Gainwell being much cheaper options this year, I'm going to try to, you know, have one of those on the back end of my bench if I can. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Um, do you see that Khalil Herbert highlight? He scored like a sixty-yard touchdown or something. Yeah, and I like Khalil, but I find I don't get him a lot. I go for Roshan. I like the getting a rookie. I, it's probably nothing, but you can get him for like free, right at the end of your draft, kind of. So mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. yeah, and just like we said, you know, the the Chicago backfield. You know, one would say it's Khalil Herbert, but when it's completely unknown like that, yeah. just Deonta, take the cheapest guy. Yeah. yeah Deonta Foreman. And, yeah. Yep. Take, take the cheapest one and, and pray. Cause yeah. you'll probably be right for at least a couple weeks um, yeah. of the year. So, all right. So let me, uh, you know, I'll scroll down a little bit here and then I, I'll have a question for you. So who tier six or lower 
do you think could be a league winner? Oh man. Um, if you're talking about kind of backups, I, I kind of like, you know, snagging Jalen Warren a lot. I feel like, you know, Harris, something could happen. He gets banged up or he just, he hasn't looked as good as everybody thought he was going to be maybe. Um, so I, I, I don't mind grabbing Warren cause he could, like I said, if he just becomes the RB one, you've got a potential top 12 running back on your team for cheap. Uh, which, yeah. which one of these guys are you grabbing? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you on Warren. I mean, I think yeah. that um, you know, Najee Harris is is solid. He's, you know, unspectacular but solid. Yeah. And Warren is is kind of that guy. You can just tell he's a coach's guy, right? Yeah. I mean, he plays much more than his draft capital would suggest. Um, you know, he plays in 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 high leverage spots. Uh, plays around the goal line. He catch passes, and yeah, I, I think he's someone that they would have no problem handing the keys to if uh, Harris goes down. Um, yeah, so I'm with you on that one. And then um, another guy I like in this range, you know, staying on that same you know discussion about undecided backfields. I'm going to take some swings at Devon A. Chain this year. Um, yeah. You know, my, Miami has you know three running backs: A. Chain, um, Jeff Wilson. And uh, um, start. Oh, yeah, Raheem Mostert. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I think their ADPs are all kind of somewhat the same, yeah. but I'm going to take, I'm going to take the rookie who has, you know, four, two, four, three speed and um, just drool about thinking about him and uh, Mike McDaniel's offense because that's going to be wild. Um, yeah, even Mike if he McDaniel's only gets the like, name. Oh, sorry, I was going to say Mike McDaniel's the name because who, who knows what he's going to do? <laughs> Exactly. It's like a crazy tactical genius, right? Like, yeah, you never know who's going to be getting the ball, who's going to be going crazy. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think it's a chain is a great opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that the, the general rule is, you know, when you're getting this late in your draft and you're drafting your fourth or fifth running back, just completely steer like free of safety. I don't want, you know, someone who's, you know, like, please don't draft Zeke Elliott. Uh, please don't <laughs> draft Gus Edwards, you know, yeah, draft yeah. someone that if an injury happens in front of them or if they fall in favor of the if, of the coaching staff, they have top 15 running back ability. Um, we don't want someone that's just going to score, you know, eight points a game if everything breaks their way. Right. So yeah. that's kind of the, the general rule down here. I've got a strategy question for you for with running backs. How do you feel about the, the handcuff situation? Take the handcuffs late. I you know, and I don't know if there's there's stats that that you know go for this or against this, but I am anti handcuff because yeah. I think handcuffs increase your floor but lower your ceiling, right? Because I want non handcuffed backup running backs because if the starter gets hurt or suspended or whatever it may be, I have that bullet that is now the night, the shiny new toy. And I have a trade piece, right? Yeah. Um, you know, someone I was never planning on playing and, um, yeah, I mean, it, it just instantly catapults my team up to one of the favorite teams. If you hit, big on an a chain or a jalen warren or something like that or if you draft Gainwell as your last pick and philly says well he's the starter um you instantly have you know a lot more you know bullets you know trade pieces on your team i i get the argument for handcuffing your own running backs but i think it's just it's like a risk tolerance thing it just it it, it raises your floor but um you know doesn't give you that super high upside I mean, when we play fantasy football we want to come in first place so i, I like to shoot for the moon and, and grab other people's handcuffs what about you i i agree i kind of feel the same way i have nothing against people who want to handcuff i i get it as well because uh you know if, if your first round running back goes down and you have his backup ready you know you're set but i want to play thinking my first round running back is going to play the entire season exactly and maybe at the end my the, my somebody else's handcuff is on my team and I get an extra running back one out of it, you know, and that's, that's what you want to play for. And that's kind of why I, I feel the same way you do about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just settled that um, 
that okay. argument for once yeah. and for all right Done. now. Uh, no more handcuffs. You only, you only handcuff if you're scared, and we don't play <laughs> fantasy football scared. So yeah. stop handcuffing. All right. Glad we settled that. It was, you know, it was weighing on my mind. Mm. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, any more, you know, deep sleeper running backs that you wanted to mention before we hop over to receivers? Um, I mean, like super deep uh, Indianapolis, uh, Evan Hall, right? He's like the rookie there and, you know, maybe he's not a rookie. Sorry, he came out with Mac last year, but no, Hall is a rookie he, this year. Oh, he is. Okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. Jonathan Taylor, something doesn't work out or whatever. He's he's good at pass catching, but he's like crazy, crazy late. Yeah. At least 82. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, he'll go undrafted. Yeah. But, um, Maybe maybe drafting like a Jonathan Taylor handcuff if you're doing your draft like this weekend. That's probably not a terrible idea, actually. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know so, if yeah, Evan Hall uh, is that handcuff or not, but yeah. It's either him or it's um help me with the guy that had a couple good weeks last year. Um geez. Eh. Oh, Deion <laughs> Jackson. Uh, and yeah. they did get Kenny drank too. I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he's he's nothing. Zombie. Cool. 